right, so you finished your first program with the LEDs blinking in alternating fashion. Congratulations. It's time to move on now to the second one, which is making motors spin and using an LED in conjunction with them to signify that the program is ended. So uh, you can see that I've done my motor and sensor setup. I can tell because it says Pragma configured with the standard model of the POE plus SIM test bed. I have my project title, team members, dates, section, all that stuff in there. My task description is basically copy pasted directly out of the instructions. Pseudocode, what we're going to do is we're again, we're going to start with everything considered in the off position. So we need to tell the machine, don't have anything on at the beginning. Then once we have that, we're going to say, okay, now right motor, you're going to turn on forward at half speed for five seconds and stop. Then you're going to turn after that stops, turn on the left motor in reverse at three quarters speed for two and a half seconds and then stop. And then we're going to turn on both motors at full power while spinning in the same direction. Doesn't designate whether it's forward or reverse. We're going to do that for 7.25 seconds. And then we're going to stop. And at the very end, we're going to turn on an LED for two seconds and that's going to signify that the program is ended. So this whole thing should take uh, 5, 7, 14, 15, 16, about 16 seconds in order to get through whenever we run it successfully. And don't forget at the end, we need to turn off the LED. So what I want to show you in this re video, and the reason I'm making this video is, um, in fact, I should have just deleted this before I started, I was playing around with it, is the menu over here, okay? So we have some text functions, and you can learn how to program these on your own. And in fact, you're going to find out that you get better at this, and you're going to be able to move quicker by typing than you are by actually dragging and dropping these over. But these menus do exist, and they're helpful whenever you're trying to do new stuff. So for instance, if I expand the natural language menu and I go into movement, we have a thing called start motor, stop motor, and set servo, three things for the motors that we're going to use in 3.1.2. So if we're gonna start with everything in the off position, let's go over here and let's take this and let's drag and drop it into its correct location. We're gonna stop a motor and it wants to know now which motor, okay? So in order to figure that out, I can either look at my machine and say, oh, it's input output 11 or something like that, but it's easier to go to motor and sensor setup and go to our motors and say, okay, here are the motors we have. We have port two and we have port three, but really let's refer to them by right motor and left motor, okay? So let's start off by replacing this with left motor and notice I capitalize it exactly like they capitalize it. I end my parentheses and I hit semicolon. So basically what I did is I said, we're gonna tell the left motor to stop. Stop a motor. Which one? The left motor. Complete sentence gets a, gets a semicolon. I'm going to come over here and write a comment. I'm going to do the same thing now for the right motor. And again, you could, if you wanted to, drag and drop from the left menu, but that was pretty quick to type. Okay. Now, let's keep going. What do I want to do next? I want to turn the right motor on, okay? Why is this not letting me enter code? Well, this is an interesting issue. So um, I'm gonna pause the video and uh, actually I'm gonna let you play around with it, okay? You can figure this out. I'm, I'm gonna come in here, I'm going to set the, okay, good, there we go. Start motor. Okay, now there's a couple of things here. See, with stopping the motor, it's easy. You just need to tell it which motor to stop. But when you start a motor, not only do you need to tell it which motor, but in the, with a comma to separate, you need to tell it what the speed is going to be. So let's start by turning on the right motor. My insert is off, that's what it is. I'm gonna turn the right motor on. I'm gonna turn it on at a speed of half speed. Now full speed is 127. So a little bit of math tells us that half speed is going to be about 63.5. Honestly, you could say 50. That's close enough, but let's be exact here. We're going to turn it on at 63.5. We're going to hit a semicolon. So it says start motor, start the right motor, start the right motor at a speed of 63.5 out of 127 at half speed. We're going to tab over a couple of spots. and we've got the motor started. Now, I'm constantly doing this whenever I'm writing code, and I want you to do the same, okay? I think it's important for this thing to stay organized so that it can be easily read. We're gonna go here, 
we're going to add another line of code. We started it at half speed. Now we need to let it go at half speed for five seconds before we let it stop. So how do we tell it to do that? That's what the wait command is for. Whenever we do wait, it wants to know wait and then how much time. Okay. So when we do this, notice it get pops up the little box here right underneath the description says wait an amount of time in seconds. Okay. So if I drag this over, I put it in here, it says wait. And then it wants to know how long. So what we're going to say then is we're going to type in a five. And what that's going to do is this. It's going to say, I'm going to start the motor. I'm going to wait five seconds before I progress beyond line 26, at which time I'm going to tell it to stop. So in other words, reading lines 25 through 27, start the right motor at half speed. Wait five seconds before you do anything else, then stop the motor. So this reads through line by line by line, and it just does exactly what you type in. We're going to go through, add a little bit more code. And that's a good, pretty good start. So I'm going to let you then figure out the rest, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, one last piece of information before you quit this video. Up at the top, we have a button that's called Fix Formatting. Formatting is important because like in an outline style where we want to indent things in order to keep them organized, Fix Formatting is going to do that for us. You'll notice whenever I click this button, nothing changes except that all of these lines are indented. And the reason that this is indented, the reason that's important is because now we can clearly see that 22 and 28, those curly braces are the beginning and end. They're the pair that determine the start and end of my main task. Everything else is indented to make it clear that this is inside of the main task. So that's the last thing I want you to do. Everything should be formatted correctly. This little magic wand tool up here does that pretty quickly. All right, hopefully that's enough to get you going with starting and stopping motors. I need you to write a code that follows this pseudocode, which is directly after the instructions I left for you. Good luck.